Hello, uh, it's Scott kind of UCU Scotland, uh, which as you hear is, is supporting this, this event. First of all, I'd like to, to say thanks very much for coming, and as many of you will know, uh, UCU across the UK on a week on Monday will start on eight days continuous strike action um, about uh, the, the deflation in pay, about casualization of contracts, about the gender pay inequality, and about workload, and in some institutions also about pensions. So, eight days continuous strike action by UCU uh, across the UK. Uh, you'd be very welcome at a picket near you. There are probably universities close to where you live. Uh, do come along and support us. Um, of course, we, as we've been saying earlier, pay, conditions, uh, workloads, inequalities are all interconnected with climate justice. You can't separate one from the other. Um, UCU has been a long-standing supporter of just transition. We've always had policy in, in, in favour of just transition. We had a, we had a, a mini-conference in UC Scotland uh, last year on just transition in Robert Gordon University, a university which is very close links with the fossil fuel industry and fossil fuel corporations. In fact, we held our seminar in um, a building called the Sir Ian Wood Building, which uh, tells you something about the, uh, the, the relationship between the university and the fossil fuel sector. Now, <clears throat> Audit Scotland recently produced a report on the financing of the higher education sector and pointed out that publicly funded education is publicly funded to the tune of 90% of the costs of providing that education and research to the tune of 80% of the costs. In other words, universities have been trying to find 10% and 20% savings year on year to try and uh, deliver the publicly funded education and research, which we all admire. <coughs> what that does is, look, is universities look for subsidy from elsewhere. And although industry provides very little at the moment, they provide an influence disproportionate to the amount of funding that they do, as indicated by the naming of buildings after uh, oil and gas entrepreneurs. Um, so, it's clear that uh, the university sector is influenced by the fossil fuel sector, not as directly as many of the other of many other jobs, but our jobs are uh, affected by the just transition. Um, and there are very few examples of good just transitions that have happened. There's there's, there's one that's regarded as as, as reasonably good. Um, in the Ruhr Valley, the, co the coal mining area in the Ruhr Valley of, of Germany. And some research has been done on that, which I just want to kind of point out some of the, the main highlights of. They said, what were the sort of preconditions that made that the, that the transition away from uh, uh, dependence on coal could be, could be achieved? The three conditions were that there had been a back, background of public investment in infrastructure, public investment in pollution control and, and this is where UCU is particularly interested in, public investment in education at a higher level, so higher and further education. We are part of the sector that needs uh, to be part of that just transition. <laughs> the implementation of the just transition, this research decided, it depended on two particularly, particular things. One, a strong public sector that was taking a lead in ensuring that the, that the uh, transition would be a just one. And secondly, no great surprise to us here, strong trade unions. So strong, well-organized, um, uh, rank-and-file trade unions is an essential part of how we move towards a just transition, which takes many forms as we've been discussing here, but that's all I want to say. Thank you very much for your support.